We have an update from Digital Brand Media and Marketing Group. It trades on the OTC Pink under the symbol DBMM as a fully reporting U.S. public holding company whose 100% owned operating subsidiary and brand Digital Clarity is a leading digital marketing management consultancy helping B2B technology leaders achieve business growth through a series of marketing strategies that have been developed over two decades. Happy to welcome back Reggie James, founder and managing director of Digital Clarity and executive director and chief operating officer of Digital Brand Media and Marketing Group. Welcome back, Reggie. How you've been lately? Hello, Anna. It's glad, I'm glad to be back. It's our third engage, uh, emerging growth conference. So looking forward to sharing some of the initiatives and everything that we did since the 9th of May. Great. And what areas will you be covering today in this update? So today, Anna, let me just bring up an agenda. There's a safe harbor. These are the areas we're going to be touching on uh, bit by bit, and then I'll do a Q&A at the end if we've got some time. Perfect. So, yeah. So it seems like in the last presentation, you spoke to our audience about the OTC platform, and I think it would uh, be worth it to touch back on that again. No, absolutely, Anna. It's, I think it's important to sort of reiterate some of the things that are going on within OTC. There have been some, uh, some challenges within the market, and I think it's worth sharing. So the OTC platform is very, very short term, number one. And DBMM is building an enterprise that represents a real competitive advantage. And it's sustainable, and it's integrated, and we believe a sophisticated approach to get the best value offering for all the stakeholders out there. Firstly, the, the actual platform does not behave like a, a traditional exchange, like the New York Stock Exchange, for example. An exchange has something called specialists. So for each issuer whose role it is to maintain an orderly market, there's no such thing like that in the OTC. Maybe that's why it's uh, sometimes called the Wild West, but the market market makers sort of act like a specialist, but boundaries are not as well defined. And often viewers, sometimes people view it as being manip manipulative. This can be challenging as people can have hidden agendas or treat the platform like an ATM and openly put out false statements, as we all know, and serve their own purposes on message boards and the like. But that said, there are also some big upsides as well. So there are, which I'm gonna to sort of touch on very uh, briefly. So someone put out on a board recently that uh, a shareholder, um, that they had bought 4 million shares at 003 cents and sold them at 3 cents. So if you work that out, they spent $1,200 and sold for $120,000 a few years later. So while there could be large gains on the OTC market by holding as the company grows, the basis price is usually very low. So what DBMM is diligently working towards is growth, but growth that's sustainable. However, that doesn't follow the basher's plan of depressing the PPS, manipulating the wash and rinse repeat pattern that we've all seen before. So to do this, they need to shake the shares loose. And that's difficult when the outstanding shares that we've had have only increased by less than 10% since 2016. That's over eight years. So repeat, over eight years, they've been increased by less than 10%. And that was to settle the debt at the benefit of the company. So the company has continuously acted in the best interest of the shareholders as it executes its growth blueprint. So DBMM's approach will be will benefit shareholders as long as they stay strong, understand the amount of time it takes to build a sustainable growth model, and they listen to what the, and have faith in the company while all of this is taking place. So again, I say if you hold, the upside is great. OTC can provide some enormous gains, especially again as they buy and hold, and DC builds its cocoon and follows the blueprint. DBMM is a company now that has enormous room for growth. Another aspect of digital marketing by a management consultancy is complex and multidimensional. And it's worth sharing this with prospective shareholders and current shareholders. 
We've worked with a software company out of Atlanta for over three years. Our strategy and application have driven an enormous 90% uplift in the annual recurring revenue for that business. They have said openly that our involvement has been integral to their success. I know it's frustrating to some when we say that we can't always share things and we're under NDAs, but you have to understand that developing companies, as small as they are sometimes, are subject to being pirated. A management consultancy like us is hired to provide a competitive advantage with a hands-on approach by the principles that DC provides and the client continues to thrive. Well, Reggie, that certainly is quite some game, both in investor value and your software client. I can see the attraction and a win-win on both sides. Thank you. It, it really is. Um, and there has, and it's, I think it's worth sticking on the OTC side as well, some initiatives that have been launched by OTC Market recently. Well, tell us more about that. Okay, so... One of the initiatives that has happened recently is the expansion of trading to overtime hours. The company intends to expand its outreach to reach new geographies for investors who have an understanding and interest in the digital landscape and how marketing integrates clients' messages and expands its reach and impact. After hours trading can reach those markets in the US and beyond on their laptop while they're busy in the working day and can and reach new shareholders. They can execute without the pressures of the workday. This is a really exciting development and initial indications are that it's expected to grow by 14.6% every single year. That's, that's quite some growth and it's gonna hit a completely new demographic. So we're really excited about this. This approach reinforces the importance of shareholders doing their own due diligence as the company continues to stress. The future developments use all available channels to influence and increase ROI. Again, another aspect of a win-win situation. That sounds great. I have been hearing a lot about this as well, and everyone's super busy and overtime hours for the OTC during a more quiet time is a big plus for companies and I'm sure prospective shareholders. So you mentioned last time that awareness is a function of marketing dollars used in the right way. You also talked about what makes the operating brand of DBMM Digital Clarity differentiating. So tell us more about what has been happening. Absolutely, Anna. The development of DC's client advisory relationship is, to be honest, is laborious and incredibly time consuming to get right. None of that drilling down could take place for new clients until all of the company's earlier mitigating circumstances were positively concluded. All the companies amid all of the COVID and UK lockdowns that we had, as well as Brexit, is quite a bumpy road. All of that is behind us now. It's welcoming, but equally frustrating as none of the events of the company is making. So that happened a year ago and the company has been developing, ex executing, as, as I've said before, a cocoon of advisory services, then following a very elaborate blueprint. That would include a strategic alliance that we mentioned um, recently to do with a company called One of Many. It's a company that engages in organizational change to optimize the client's offering at the front end. And DC comes in to add their ROI expertise at the back end. There are several others in the pipeline to provide an expanded offering to prospective clients. We announced representation as well um, that we've established in Irvine, California to roll out our West Coast advisory service from, uh, for DC with a really interesting individual who we'll be able to talk about uh, further down the line. That individual has experience and expertise to be the company's eyes and ears on the ground over there in the West Coast and utilize that amazing area with the university and all that talent pool to grow our infrastructure out there. We will run the quality control in London while growing US operations with experts in the business out there. Some of the other areas we're looking at for representation in that same model um, are currently Miami, Chicago, and Asheville, among others. So the lead times are long and complex and extremely laborious, as I keep saying, but relationships are everything. 
and we are organizing on that basis and we will update as we go along the way. Well, thanks, Reggie. You really do have a focus in the U.S. and I presume that is the first leg of growth. Will other geographies follow? Well, Rome wasn't built in a day, Anna, um, and nothing travels in a straight line. Um, there are thousands of cliches that become quite common because they're accurate. Measurement of results do occur, but in a public company, they take place every quarter with the K's and the Q's. These results follow the blueprint that are natural progression, but after the cocoon that I mentioned is in place, or we simply will not be able to make it sustainable. There will be ups and downs along the way, but our marketplace is huge. As I mentioned previously, there is a, there's a massive trillion dollar market that needs our help. There'll be ups and downs, as I've said, but we will execute our plan, learn from each step and improve as we go along. That will provide the measurable results quarter by quarter reported in the finance. But even the biggest companies that we take for granted as household names, have had times in the wilderness and we're no different. Growth and acquisition will still continue, but the companies at stage with those initiatives are absorbed as part of doing business. Amazon went 14 years without making a bean, if I can use that British term. Even Apple has been in the doldrums periodically. These are huge organizations, and but that's the nature of business. The smaller ones often do not even survive but DBMM has shown its resilience and is a survivor. I'll say it again, Anna, DBMM's approach will benefit shareholders as long as they stay strong with the understanding, the amount of time sustainable growth takes and listen and have faith in the company while that's taking place. Wonderful. Well, Reggie, we do have to move on to our next presenter. We thank you so much for this update and we definitely look forward to you coming back on next month. So thank you for your time today. Anna, thank you so much. There'll be some podcasts and various other things and other initiatives. And I look forward to sharing that with everyone in due course. Wonderful. We'll see you look again soon. Thank you. Update. Thank you, Anna. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.